Thank you, Director Crosdale. Wonderful to see you this afternoon. Um, I think the best way to sum up uh, the executive's proposal for Nice Sofa is flat. There are no significant increases in the funding and a few cuts that are very concerning. Um, if we're going to be serious about the goal of keeping older adults in the community and the fact that there is an increase in seniors on a daily basis, we need to figure out a way of uh, funding those needs and how to develop more service in infrastructure for our seniors. So I I'd like to follow up and talk about what Senator Serino talked about and the fact that one of the programs that you're cutting is NORCS. Um, he, the executive has identified about a million dollars uh, from NORC and neighborhood NORCs as savings. That's almost a 25% cut. Um, can you talk about exactly where those funds are going to be going? Um, based on the current budget proposal, there's no plan for reinvestment, um, but we would be open to considering other options as we move through the budget making process. Now, these NORCs have contracts with NYSOFR, is that not correct? That's correct, yes. So what happens to those contracts? We would have a transition plan um, in working with the current NORC providers. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be a cliff as of April 1. Um, we would look at the time they have left in their contract period and then what would happen with those services um, as they move forward. We would also work with the area agencies on aging at the local level because there are investments at the local level to see if there were possibilities of um, investments from other funding into those programs. Will any of the contracts that are midterm be, be cut? Those that are in the middle of their contracts, will they be ended? Uh, there's a possibility, but again, we would work on a transition plan. Uh, we wouldn't just drop them immediately. This would be a conversation that we would have with the, the service provider. Um, we would also go back and look at the data that was presented um, that really identified those NORCs and neighborhood NORCs, just to make sure there weren't any shifts in the data since we looked at it last. So that would be part of the overall analysis. Could you talk a little bit about exactly what NORCs do? Not only classic NORCs, but neighborhood NORCs as well. It's really a coordination of services. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of the service providers that go into the neighborhood NORCs and the traditional NORCs already exist in the community. The coordinating staff pull all of those services together because there is a high concentration of older adults, as we know, in those neighborhood NORCs and the traditional NORCs to make sure that the older adults are receiving the services that they need to remain in their communities and in their homes. So it's really about a coordination of services. So which programs would be impacted by that reduction? You mentioned, you mentioned that there are uh, seven neighborhood NORCs mm -hmm. and four classic NORCs. Could you tell us which ones they are? Yes. So with the neighborhood NORCs in Albany, it would be the Jewish Family Services of Northeastern New York. In Monroe, it would be the Junior Jewish Family Services of Rochester. In Nassau, it would be the Mid-Island Y Jewish Community Center. In New York City, it would be the Isabella Geriatric Center. Again, in New York, it would be the Visiting, Nervous, Visiting, Visiting Nurse Services Center. Um, in Queens, it would be the Samuel Field YWHA. In Queens, it would be the Jacob A. Rios Neighborhood Settlement House. And with our NORCs in New York, it would be the Grand Street Settlement. Again in New York, the Henry Street Settlement. Again in New York, Stanley Isaacs Neighborhood Center. And again in New York, the Samuel Fields YWHA. Um, a lot of these also have investments from DIFTA. 
um, in the tune of almost $6.5 million, and they also received funding from the city council in the tune of $2.1 million. So it would be hard to say what the actual impact would be. We would have to look at their budget and see what other investments go into their programs to determine the, the ultimate impact. One of the requirements for NORCs is to find matching funds. Mm -hmm. So you're now punishing these NORCs and neighborhood NORCs, and I find it extremely interesting that most of them in, are in New York City, and most of them, uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm shocked, most of them are in neighborhoods that are serving um, Jewish communities, because almost six out of the 11, or seven out of the, the 11, had the word Jewish in, their, in the name of the organization, or serve a YMHA, which is the Young Men Hebrews Association. I'm concerned that the match is being punished, and certain communities in New York City are being punished. Um, the decision wasn't made based on quality of services and certainly wasn't made to punish any provider. We think they all do a fantastic job. Um, as stewards of taxpayer dollars, we can't fund programs that are out of compliance with statutory requirements. We would be, although, open to other options as we move through the budget making process. But you're specifically asking for matching funds. A for certain amount of funds um, certain amount of dollars have to be matched. And those that are receiving DIFTA funds or other funds, you're saying, well, they have enough money. Is that, isn't that what you're saying? No, absolutely not. A lot of the match that goes into the NORC and neighborhood NORC programs are in-kind match. So whenever we have a community provider that goes in and say, like I had mentioned, provides nursing services, the value of that service can be used as an in-kind match. For some of our programs that are, that are in extremely impoverished areas, we do have the ability to waive the match, and I sign off on those. And we have on a lot of these waive the match because of the low income um, neighborhoods that these NORCs reside in. Is there something wrong with, with DIFTA in New York City funding a program and ISO? For, you're basically saying the two can't be funded at the same time because oh. they're providing services or they're providing too many services? I mean, what's the rationale behind that? Oh, no, they can absolutely provide um, services in tandem with each other. New York City has its own regulations and rules outside of what, they, what we might find in the New York State Older Americans Act. We have, for decades, provided services in tandem with New York City. Um, it's not a question of whether or not we can do this in partnership because we thrive off partnerships in the aging network. It's just strictly a matter of not meeting the statutory requirements under the older Americans or the uh, New York State Elder Law. It's it's not based on anything outside of that. Which statutory requ requirement are they are they not? Uh, um, you know, what are they missing? Which requirements? Are they, are they not uh, matching? Um, it has to do with the number of older adults that are residing in the catchment area. For the neighborhood NORCs, they have to have 40% of older adults identified as being those 60 years um, of age or older. And they also can't have more than 2,000 older adults living in the catchment area. For the NORCs, it's 50% of the residents have to be 60 years of age or older and they have to have a minimum of 2,500 older adults living in the residence. So those are the areas where the neighborhood NORCs and NORCs that are identified have um, fallen outside of the statutory requirements. Mm -hmm. The goal of NORCs and neighborhood NORCs is to help residents maintain their independence, keep them out of nursing homes, uh, unnecessary, you know, try to avoid unnecessary hospital visits, um, by cutting these programs, these 11 programs, what would be the Medicaid uh, impact of reducing the availability of services? I don't know that there would be a Medicaid impact. Um, the nature of all of our programs in the aging network 
um, all have the same goal as the NORCs. That's to keep older adults at home, to reduce the rehospitalization, to reduce the risk of going into a skilled nursing facility. So it's not that these older individuals in any of these areas would cease to receive services through the aging network. It just might be through a different mechanism. Would you have a number of how many people would be affected by eliminating these 11 NORCs and neighborhood I, NORCs? I can certainly get that data for you. I don't have it in front of me this afternoon. Okay. Would you be able to give me a number also uh, what the economic and health care consequences are by reducing the neighborhood and, and classic NORCs in these community and what the impact would be on Medicaid funding? I can certainly try to pull that data together, but again, um, it doesn't mean that we couldn't put other services in place for the individuals who are residing in those catchment areas. Um, that would definitely be part of the analysis. It just doesn't seem that it's worth doing this to 11 neighborhoods for $951,000. I just don't know what the executive was thinking. Yeah, we're, we're certainly open to other options. Um, the conversation's not closed. Uh, we can discuss this further as we move through the budget making process to see if we can come up with other, other alternatives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman.